Hey guys, welcome to Flat Top King. Today, it's all about the cheese steak. We're putting it on the Blackstone. You guys stay tuned. So we've got our Blackstone seasoned, just like the Camp Chef. When we seasoned it, the very first cook we did was cheese steaks. So I thought, what better way to introduce the Blackstone to the back porch than doing a cheese steak? Now over the videos back and forth, over the comments back and forth, over the friendships I've made during this process, it has come to one conclusion. There's a difference between a Philly cheesesteak and a cheesesteak. So let's separate the two. We're staying away from the Philly authentic cheesesteak. Today we're doing the, the Flat Top King cheesesteak. So if somebody said, hey, what's, the, what's your favorite way to eat a cheesesteak? What's your favorite way to make a cheesesteak? I think we got one for you today. First things first, the bread. Personally, we like our bread just the way it looks. We like a little thicker bread. I'm gonna hollow it out just a hair to eliminate some of the inside, but this outside is soft and chewy. Since we're not from the Philly area, it's hard for us to get Philly bread. And I'm not paying $19.33 to ship a loaf of bread to my house. So that's what we got. Next up, let's talk about the cheeses. I got some deli sliced boar's head American cheese, and I've got some provolone cheese. Personally, I'm not the cheese whiz fan. That's why I want to stay away from the authentic side. I want to make the best one that I like, okay? Next on the list, peppers and onions. You got to have them. I don't care what you say. That's my personal favorite, and I love the vinegary taste from the banana peppers. Now, you ready for the kicker? The meat is the most important part. That's what the cheese steak is all about. Cheese and steak, and you put it in bread, right? So whatever you put in there, mayonnaise, ketchup, I know I'm gonna get slack for it, but I don't eat the ketchup, but I know some people do. It's the meat. I want you guys to see how well marbled this ribeye is. We've had it frozen for about 45 minutes-ish, and I'm gonna slice this as thin as possible. All right, I had planned, just like I've got a ton of comments already, I wonder how the air fryer works. How, how would you like the air fryer? So on and so forth. Well, we turn the air fryer on and between the wind and the air fryer noise, it's very, very loud. So we're gonna have to figure out plan B on that situation. I already bought my fries. You guys know I like my seasoned fries. And that was going in the air fryer no matter what on the first cook. But since it's so loud, I'm just gonna put them right on the grill and start frying those. After the meat has been cut, I've separated a large chunk of the excess fat. We're gonna use that as flavoring and seasoning for a griddle, okay? The idea is this cook is gonna happen super fast. We're gonna chop up the meat, add the sauteed vegetables. Inside that, once it's all combined, we're gonna add that American cheese. Let that American cheese do its thing. It's known, widely known for its melting ability, right? Then once all that scooped back up, we're gonna lay that provolone cheese on it and top it and steam our bun at the same time. Let's go. Pour some fresh black pepper and some salt. When it comes to your veggies, you need to cook them the way you like them. If you like them extra crispy, don't cook them as long. If you like them way, way, way cooked, then cook them longer before you add your meat. But I'd highly recommend before you start your cheese steak that you cook your vegetables first and get them to the way you like them because your meat is something that's gonna happen super fast and you do not wanna overcook your ribeye keep all that fat, all that hard work that you're gonna create by rendering out that fat, that's the flavor you want in the cheese steak. You see that fat and all that fat that we rendered out and how crispy it is? I'm not even taking it off. Just move it to the side.
Once your steak is almost done, go ahead and incorporate it with your peppers and onions and just hit it with a little bit of salt. Salt right at the end. And I'm doing it the way I like it, just a touch of the W salt. Just a touch. You guys see what that American cheese has done to the steak? Now you've got that cheese running all through the steak. Now you're allowing that steam and that fat from the ribeye to come up and season and steam your bun. It's gonna melt that cheese. When you're doing your steak and your onions, go ahead and prepare the portion that fits your type of bread. If you have 12 inches of portion and only six inches of bread, obviously the filling's gonna go everywhere. All right, here's a trick. If I ever try to teach you something, this is it. Use that bread as like an absorbent piece of towel, right? Let it absorb all the grease and all the flavors. Don't just put your meat right in the bread and eat it right away. The best ones, when they're wrapped up, you drive down the road five or 10 minutes, all that meat calms down. It just infuses all that bread. So take whatever you like Put it together on what bun you like. Mm. <laughs> the reason why we put the banana peppers in there is that brininess. It's like the idea of sweet and salty. There's so much fat and so much juice from the ribeye. I suggest using a ribeye that the the, vi the vinegar from the banana peppers cuts it beautifully. Easy. Use the right ingredients and make it the way you want it. Cheese steaks on the Blackstone griddle. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press that subscribe button, pound the notification button, share it with your friends. I'm going inside because it is basketball time in Tennessee. And your shirt says football. <laughs> it's a Tennessee shirt.